Alright guys, tonight we are going to talk about V-Ray RT, real-time rendering, or in a new V-Ray Next, it's called V-Ray GPU. So it basically works with your graphic cards. However, they have mixed this and made a good combination so we can use V-Ray CPU and GPU and the interactive mode and active shading mode. So it's kind of a mix of everything and we have also IPR that's interactive progressive rendering which works pretty much like real time okay so we, tonight we're going to examine all the functions and options that we have so first let me explain some differences between the progressive rendering and the active shade mode so the progressive rendering starts with noisy image which is then progressively refined so it becomes better and better and better with the, with the time and active shade mode is interactive rendering means that the render will be reinitiated each time the scene being modified so if you move your camera zoom in zoom out it will refresh and start calculate the render again um, we can run it through the v-ray frame buffer or extended viewport and we can run it either on the cpu or the gpu so let's go and see the panels that we have that's a little bit changed in the new v-ray but the same parameters are located in that uh, in those fields so the first one on top we have the shading which affect physical accuracy of shading traces depth as the first one here we can see it's set up to five the maximum number of bounces that will be computed for reflection and refraction rays the next one is gi set up to three this one computes the maximum number of bounces for GI, so for the global illumination. So the first one is reflections, refractions. The second one is global illumination. Uh, the next function we have there, override material, allows us to override shading of entire scene. So we can put one material and apply it to the entire scene if we check this. Next, we have the performance. Array bundle size, number of rays calculated each step, larger number increase overall the speed but decrease the interactivity. So it will refresh a little bit slower but you will have a little better quality. Rays per pixel, the number of rays must be traced for each pixel. Uh, the interactivity and the amount of data transferred between the random. So basically it's the same thing. It will also, if you increase it, it will lag a little bit on the, uh, on the interactivity but it will increase the quality. Progressive RPP, when enabled, VRIT uses a lower rays per pixel value in the beginning of the rendering and gradually increase it. So we're going to have a really fast preview of, of things if we tick this option, but then um, it will progressively go into the good quality. Under sampling, uh, when enabled, VRA RT or VRA GPU starts rendering the image at lower resolution to increase the interactivity later the image is rendered at its final resolution so i think this is pretty much clear next one engine types so i think what actually it does it goes and checks what hardware you have and then it applies that automatically so no need to choose those guys but as again you can select between cpu opencl and guda here so now let's go and check out our uh, functions and options that we have for GPU render or V-Ray RT real time. All right, so we're going to do our test with that scene. Let's open our rendering dialog. And as you see here, we have production, which is uh, progressive or bucket mode. We have interactive, which is uh, live rendering. And we have, it's pretty much like progressive. And we have the active shade mode. So this is the V-Ray RT or V-Ray GPU in our days. So let's first go and check out IPR right here. We can click start. We can see the render is started. And it's rendering pretty fast, however, we using our CPUs in this one and uh, let's see how long it's gonna take so basically with this option we have things like real zoom 
we have also new navigation so we can change the viewport while we're rendering inside the frame buffer we can reinitiate restart it we can select the object and let it run we can get object material so let's get this one and we can change its color pretty neat what we can do is we can focus distance and we can get area of interest here so we get details everywhere we point our bounds and we also can do regions with a higher quality so that works for interactive as you can see here and we also can change our lighting which is cool uh, let's go to our light lister and change change the intensity to about two the light lister needs to go so six and one pretty cool stuff very fast and initiating stuff very quickly okay now I'm going to stop this and open my history now I'd like to save this one here and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch this to active shade mode this is our Geary RT or Geary GPU so in production I'm going to say set it to GPU and um, if we click render here can see that very GPU kicked in but it might not pick up the colors so what we need to do is open our histogram load very settings and click render all right so we're getting our colors back I'm going to close this frame buffer it's an old one and this new one you can see working pretty cool so another way to access um, this one is if we switch the perspective we can click on the active shade mode render this out all right so those are pretty cool options here and what I like about it is that if we uh, we can switch between all of those and we can use either an interactive we can use V-Ray GPU or V-Ray CPU if we click to view a GPU, we also have the IPR option here. So we can start it. You can see the GPU kicks in. And it renders freaking crazy fast. I haven't seen V-Ray so fast in my life. Seriously, this stuff is just smoking. Okay, now if we switch back to stop it and switch back to active shade 
we can also see statistics while we render. We're going to click on the interactive here and we can also say show statistics. And we can see we're using V-Ray GPU GUDA. That's the number. All the information here. GeForce 1070. And I'm using only 3.56 gigs of RAM. I mean, it's free. So from 8, I'm using about 5 gigs of RAM to, to go through this. But you can see the render goes very, very fast. The passes are running crazy quickly. And we're getting that image in, in just seconds. All right. So we can limit time. We can increase the quality if we want here. And we can do a bunch of other cool manipulations with uh, light. We can change the color. So it's very useful for those that want to get quick results and working on the scene and have it right away rendered and ready to go, ready to show what it's all about. Okay, so uh, go ahead and see the next tutorial about V-Ray GPU for production.